Hi, this is Charles with Historical Gaming, and tonight I wanted to talk about Victoria Cross by Worthington Games, which is an excellent depiction of the Battle of Orcs Drift. If you've ever seen the movie Zulus, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is the uh, a colonials trying to protect the hospital from Zulu warriors who decided to attack due to a treaty broken between uh, the, the British and the Zulus. And uh, it's an excellent depiction of 4,000 Zulu warriors coming in with spears to attack a bunch of British military guys protecting an army base who basically, are, uh, the object of the game is to protect the guys inside the hospital. So you're trying to rescue those guys once the hospital catches on fire, but you can't do anything about it until the hospital catches on fire. So initially you're firing across the sandbags and protecting the compound from this onslaught of Zulu warriors that just keeps coming and coming and coming. It's a very difficult game to win, so don't expect it to be even for both sides. Um, the, the big thing about this, the, it's one of the most important Brit British military uh, history battles, historical battles, because 11 Victoria Crosses were uh, awarded to the victory and uh, to the valor and courage of the, the people who fought in this battle. So let's take a look at the game and I uh, hope you enjoy. So one of the first things that you'll notice about the game is that the game is basically broken into two areas. You've got the compound, which is here, and you've got the external area where the Zulus are coming in from the outside edges, and their uh, reinforcements are placed in the outside edges of the game here. And they move forward, and they're coming forward to attack these guys. Their object is to get inside the compound and get into melee with these guys. Now, the British are uh, more firepower. They're trying to shoot them the uh, Zulu player as they're coming across the board here. Uh, there's only three zones, so you can see that you can get into melee pretty quick. The way the British player sets up first, and he can decide to set up all of his units however he wants. Now, typically these blocks are stood up like this, so your opponent can't see exactly what you have, and uh, they'll set up opposite each other, so um, you can't really see that, but all of the British units are set up full strength at the top here. Now each time a unit takes a hit, it is knocked down one, and once it's completely uh, eliminated from the game, it's done for. Now if you can get a soldier into this area right here, uh, the sergeant inside that hospital, or this little repair area over here, can restore up to two strength points per turn, uh, so you can apply one to this unit and one to this unit if they're damaged, but they have to make it to this hospital and be there at the beginning of the turn for that to happen. The Zulu player, uh, he can set up multiple blocks. He's only allowed 90 SP per turn, but he could set up two fours and a two, or he could set up a 10, as long as the total on the, outs uh, on the board isn't more than 90 SP. At the end of each turn, all of his units that were eliminated keep coming back in, so it's very tough as waves and waves of Zulus come in and attack the British, and the British player is just trying to um, make it through eight turns. And eventually the hospital will catch on fire, and the British player is trying to save these units by moving them out of the hospital. And uh, it takes one, a one SP unit to um, carry a unit out of the hospital. So we've set up our British deployment here, and that's however we want. Um, you can see the different zones here. So here to here to here to here, 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 here here, indicated by the dotted lines. And movement is from here to here, or here to here, here to here. There's no diagonal movement, and there's no diagonal firing. So if the unit here is trying to shoot at a unit coming from 20, um, he wouldn't be able to do that. He'd only be able to fire from here to here, or from here to here. See the dotted line? So they can fire on both sides, each direction. As they get closer, it's easier to hit, too. So as we talked about earlier, the game is 16 turns long, equally divided by eight day turns and eight night, night turns. Uh, and within each turn, there is the British movement phase. The British player adds reinforcements, uh, adds replacements, and they move may move any and all units following the movement rules. So, uh, like I said before, you can replacement is basically if you've got a unit who's been damaged down to one, and you can bring him back up to three, and during the movement phase, you can move him one space over back up to here. So this is one, that's one, that's one. 
uh, if they, there is a leader with them, they can move up to two spaces. So Lieutenant Shard could extra, um, let's say we've got a, a guy over here who's damaged. He can ex, what was I trying to think of? He can help somebody up to four SP move into the hospital, um, two zones. So that's one, two, and get to the hospital, do a repair, and then he'd have to wait till the end of the next turn before we'd be able to come back. The Zulu player receives replacements and then may move any and all units following movement rules. There's fire combat. The British player uh, conducts fire combat following combat rules, and then the Zulu player conducts this random fire combat. All losses caused by uh, fire combat take, immediate, take effect immediately. In melee, both players conduct simultaneous melee. The hospital flip phase, the Zulu player checks to see if a fire starts or spreads in the hospital, and then you check for victory, and if it's that's the end of the turn, and then you start the next turn if there is no victory. All right, so let's get down to gameplay a bit. The uh, Zulu player has set up his uh, units on the outside perimeter, totaling 90 SP. He's got his 10 blocks out here. Each uh, leader can only do his special action of moving two zones with uh, up to 10 blocks or 10 SP. So the British turn one is basically the movement phase has happened uh, during setup. Zulu replacements, the Zulus have moved their uh, Zulus onto the board. And now we do a Zulu movement. So this one can move one, he can move two, he can move one because he doesn't have a leader. One, one. He can move two, but he's behind the hospital here. So he can actually go over here. He can go two. He can go two. And he can go one. Okay. So uh, each one of the British players is going to uh, do his attacks. Uh, for each SP, he's going to roll a die, and he's going to hit on a 3, 4, 5, or 6 in the adjacent zone, a 4, 5, or 6 here, and a 5 or 6 out in this zone, the third zone away. So I'll go ahead and do that. Rolling dice for all these guys is going to take a minute, so I'll be back in just a second. Well, that didn't take as long as I, I thought. So we've got uh, 12, 13 dice with Lieutenant Chard to uh, roll here, which eliminated... Uh, this unit, we took him down to 10, so uh, we had uh, four hits, I believe, so one, two, three, four, and five, and they'll come back in on the next turn. Um, over here, we had two hits, brought him down to two. Over here, we had one hit, brings him down one. And then over here, we had five hits. So we took him down one, two, three, four, five. So they've still got two SP left, one SP left, and the leaders. And then we've got these guys coming up behind them too. This is a especially weak area. So the Zulu player gets a plus one on that particular area as they come in. And now, we look at the Zulu fire randomly from the hill. So the Zulu player is going to get six dice and uh, pick an area that he wants to attack, and he's going to attack right here. For each six that he rolls, he's going to take it. one of those guys and knock him down. So it's rolled two sixes. And he's down to one. And he's down to one. So the fire phase is over. So simultaneous melee into adjacent six, uh, areas, spaces. Uh, Brits hit on five and six. Zulus on six. Plus one for Brits behind a wall. So they hit on four, five, or six. So uh, right here, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight dice. Hitting on four, five, or six against these guys. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's gone. And that's it for melee. Uh, oh, the uh, 
these guys will get to fire back because it is simultaneous. And it was, I think, two SP plus the leader, so that's three dice back, hitting on sixes. And no hits. Okay. Now it's the hospital, hospital fire. Uh, each turn after it is meleeed. So we've got a guy, I forgot about him. So this guy is going to attack the hospital. The hospital was left unprotected in zone in. Uh, I'm sorry, there is a guy there, but he's in the hospital. Uh, but this unit can see here. He didn't fire earlier. So we're going to do uh, three against this guy. So that's one hit, two hits. And then for the melee phase, two more hits, and he's gone. So the melee phase was unsuccessful this turn. And now we check for victory. So uh, we look at the Zulu strength points eliminated this turn. So we had um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we had 23 Zulu points. So 23. So Zulu is one point for every Brit block eliminated. Burning down hospital, six points. Destroying the water cart did not happen this turn. And now it's the next turn, so we move it over to the night phase. The Zulu player would get four victory points if he took over this area here. And now we go back to the very beginning, and we do our British re repair. So none of our units are wounded. I'm sorry, in the, uh, the repair area, so they can't get repairs. Uh, now we do movements. So uh, with the leader, they can move up to two spaces. He can carry up to... Lieutenant Bromhead can carry up to four units with him. He's going to take these two guys with him. One, two. Take them to the hospital to be repaired next turn. This turn, they can't do anything. Uh, for our next movement, we're going to move two of these guys over here with Lieutenant Chard. So he can move one, two. And these guys will do come across the wall here. And we'll move one guy into N to make sure that we're protected there. And we'll move him into P. OK, so that's it for British movement. Zulu replacements come back into the game. So we're going to count up how many SPs we have on the board to make sure that we don't have more than 90 total. So I'll take just a second to do that. So as the game goes on, you will see that the British player is not able to bring back up reinforcements except for two SP per turn here. And this is going to be a problem for them as hordes and waves and waves of Zulu players are coming um, towards him on the board and stuff like that. Um, so as these air, these guys will move back further and further into defensive positions, inside of D is important. Um, inside of this area here might help. Um, getting close to the hospital to be able to take the uh, units out of the hospital as the fire starts and stuff like that. Uh, the victory conditions. If the Brits avoid Zulu victory for 16 turns, they win. Uh, the Zulu's goal is 14 VPs. One point for every Brit block eliminated, plus burning down the hospital is six points. Destroying the water cart is five, and uh, five VP, four at night. And uh, last one occupying crawl, A and B, is four points. Last redoubt, D10, is a, let's see, 10 points. And if 47 Zulu SPs are eliminated in any one turn, they lose a VP. So last time we did 32, and that was pretty good, but still not quite enough. So it's a very fun game. It's a very good depiction of uh, you know, that era, and uh, I like the blocks. 
I like the map a lot, the way it looks. Uh, there was a lot of complaints about the the line of sight with this game, but it makes sense. If you've got a building here, you can't look at it as a blocking line of sight structurally. You know that this area behind here is not be able to be seen from here. You can't see from here to here. It just um, just try not to think about it technically, but where is the building? What's behind the building? And this area is more like a, a an area controls game where the the zone, it's a zone behind a building. It's not necessarily a hex behind a building like some other games. Then as the uh, hospital catches on fire and uh, you're trying to save these guys, it gets kind of fun. Um, so if you get a chance to play this game, it's very good. Um, it's light. It's lots of dice. It's uh, got lots of different victory conditions and things to think about. And as the Zulu player, you just get to bring in hordes and hordes of... Uh, players and each time they get eliminated they keep coming back and it's a uh, just a crazy fun time so i hope you get a chance to play this game and take care and thanks for watching